Hello friends, welcome to Java EE EJP JPA tutorial. Now you are watching part 2 of the sub series creating and using stateless session bin. So, in this video, we will create all the projects required to deploy a stateless session bin. And in the next video, we will do the actual coding. So here is the prerequisites. So first you have to create a environment uh, that will work with Eclipse. So you have to uh, create a wild fly then hook that to the Eclipse so that we can directly publish our bean to the wild fly server. So you have to watch this video playlist number 06 very first video in that. So here we are uh, talking about how to prepare the dev environment uh, so that uh, you can work with Wildfly and Eclipse together. So as already told many times, uh, so the EJB learning requires exposure to uh, Java servlet as well as uh, JSP. So in this video, we are going to create projects. So first uh, we will create an EAR project. So EAR is enterprise application project. So that will come with dot EAR extension. So to work with enterprise Java bean, we will deploy this EAR file to the middleware. So middleware here is Wildfly 10.1. Next we create EJP project and so as we already told in the previous parts an EJP project can contain one or more EJP beans. So the EJP project uh, when we deploy it in the server it will go as a jar file but if you see this ejb project so this is actually a jar file when we deploy and this jar file is packaged inside the enterprise application project so the ear project contains the jar file and the jar file will have one or more ejb beans So for demonstration purpose, EJP client project holds, okay, so not uh, uh, the consuming client, here it's a EJP client. So EJP client project holds the interfaces to interact with the EJP components. So this is also deployed as a jar file. and this ejb client will hold interfaces that means if we define some functionality here fx1 if it is implemented here the ejb client will have this fx1 as a interface function so what happens is this can be uh, accessible by the outside world so outside world will make a call to this EJB client and through this EJB client the outside world will access the EJB functionality. So EJB client is also a jar file and this jar file also deployed inside the EJB EAR, pro EJB EAR project. So enterprise application project. I mean. Next we will create web application so this web application will contain the front end uh, user interfaces say html servlets or jsp so these components will act as a client for the ejb project so in our learning series what we will do we will define our functionality inside the ejb project and we will expose those functionality through ejb client and EJB web application will make use of these interfaces 
so this is where the remote or local interface come into picture in all our series we are going to use the ejb remote interface why because that is more robust than the local why because when we use ejb remote uh, it can be accessed inside the jvm or even outside the jvm so outside the jvm in the sense uh, uh, so let's say this is the server jvm1 and there are some other standalone uh, machine or a different machine that will definitely have a different java runtime environment we can call it as two so remote interface will work uh, well here but in our example we are going to use all in a single jvm local interface holds good but for uh, easy distribution we are going to use always the remote interface so once you code using remote interface you can easily ship your content to a different machine so that uh, the remote interface will work well and uh, the client deployed here or running in jvm2 can easily make a call to ejb project functionalities so all right so web application that will contain html servlet and jsp and that will act as a client so in all our tutorial we will use this web application to access the ejb uh, which components which we develop yeah so in this course we will keep ejb ejb client and web app inside the ear project if you see enterprise application project so it's a big package ear package which contains the jar file of uh, ejb project and jar file of uh, ejb client and web application that comes with an extension var file so all this stuff will get deployed inside the ear project then the single unit here project is deployed inside our wildfly that means once ear is deployed inside the wildfly it will have ejb project web application and ejb client so for simplicity purpose and to learn the ejb we deploy everything inside one single server but in real world uh, since it's a distributed computing uh, the web application can move outside to separate jvm so in the initial uh, concepts we talked about uh, an example of uh, online retail store and um, a payment gateway right so there if you see the interaction if it happens um, the components are distributed between two different machine all right so here in this course we are going to learn about uh, different ejb uh, i mean the stateless session bean stateful session bean jpa as well as um, uh, uh, mdb message driven bean a timer all the stuff so to make the learning process go simple we deploy everything inside a single unit and deploy inside the wildfly all right so these are all the projects and if you see this is one project we need to create inside the eclipse ear project then we need to create ejb project when we create ejb project at that time itself the ui will ask for or it will apt an action to create ejb client so we will uh, using the ui itself we will create both the projects together then we will create our uh, dynamic web application project so this stuff we did multiple time when we learned the servlet as well as a jsp so now the extra stuff what we are going to create is ea or ejb uh, ejb main as well as a client So here, if you see in real world, this component can be distributed among different machines. So that's why uh, here our example uses a remote interface. But here, since every components are running under single JVM, uh, we can still go for a local interface also. But the remote interface has more advantage than the local interface so that's why we are going with the remote interface of course it is slightly slow compared to local interface but 
uh, it is a highly scalable so the moment you move or the moment you distribute your component you no need to change your local interfaces to remote since you coded it with the remote interface now we will create all these projects let's go to the demo so here we are starting eclipse neon so this is the workspace location you can create uh, workspace anywhere make sure the uh, folder is empty so if you see the wildfly is configured here so this is part of the previous site so if you followed that video then you have the wildfly 10x environment configured so the first step is creating a project file new and if you see here we are creating enterprise application project so if it is not visible here in our case so uh, once you start using the projects that will appear here but uh, in case if you won't see this enterprise application project here in the menu item click on this other menu then type the project name and if you see enterprise application project that comes under java e so now let me remove this and if i go to java ee i can see enterprise application project so click on this then click uh, next so here project name i am giving it as ejb ear so here i am using the default location for the project and target runtime is wildfly 10.x ear version is 7 and here we are using the default configuration for wildfly 10.x so okay this is enough uh, javascript not required at this moment so that's all so we named our ear project now we will click next then we will click finish so we created ejb ear project next we will create ejb project so this is the ejb project and the ejb ear here this will produce the dot ear extension when we are deploying it and ejb project will be deployed inside a jar file so we are naming this as ejb bean so this is a one time setup once we create all this project in all our tutorial we will start adding the beans inside this project so here we are choosing ejb bean as the project name we will accept all the default so since it is eclipse neon by default it will give ejb module version 3.2 wildfly runtime is at 10.x so we are going with the default configuration so we'll just uh, accept the default then click on this uh, ear membership so that this project ejb bean dot jar will get added inside the ear so I'm clicking next and if you see here ejb client dot jar make sure to tick uh, this option create ejb client jar module to hold the client interfaces and classes so that means what we are creating here is the ejb bean project and if you see 
there is one more job that means the wizard will create two project one is ejb bean project and the other one is ejb bean client dot jar project so this client is nothing but all the clients will access our bean through this ejb bean client so this will expose the interfaces the functionality will stay with ejb bean so here we are talking about two properties i mean two project ejb bean project which will hold the implementation the wizard itself asking do you want to create a ejb client jar module so so we after by default it is in a ticket state and we are accepting the default and asking the eclipse to create the client project for us so once i click to finish you can see this is ejb jar and ejb bean client so at present we have three projects so next we need to create a dynamic web application project so here we are choosing dynamic web project and we are naming this as ejb web then we are accepting all the defaults and here we are clicking add this web project to our ear project ejb ear then we will ask to generate web.xml we will click finish so if you see now we have all four projects are ready so now we will deploy this project before that we are starting the wild fly once we see wild fly is started we can go here and we can choose add and remove and add the ejb ear and if you see this is our ejb ear it contains ejb bean ejb bean client and ejb web ejb web will make call to ejb client and ejb client since it is exposing only the interfaces it will make a call to ejb bean to implement i mean to invoke the actual functionality so ejb web uh, it access the ejb bean through this ejb client and all these three coding units are placed inside a single enterprise application called ejb er so when we deploy we just deployed ejb er that's all now ejb er is deployed and you can see the message here deployed that's all now project is ready from next video onwards we will start developing the uh, ejb bean and we will start some code here at ejb web so to do the cleanup first stop the ejb ear component then remove it once you remove you can see the bean project is undeployed then we can stop the server that's all here in this video thank you for watching bye